Well, the president's version of the attacks in Benghazi uh, not matching up with the earlier statements. Uh, we want to know what you uh, think about it all. Do you believe President Obama lied to the American people when he said that he had declared the Benghazi terrorist uh, attacks to be an act of terror? Number 12. Vote in our online poll. Go to facebook.com uh, slash Blue Dobbs tonight and cast your vote. We'd like to know what, uh, what your view is. We'll have results at the end of the broadcast tonight. Joining me now, Congressman Louis Gohmert of Texas. He is vice chairman of the House Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security. Uh, Mike Singh joins us, managing director of the Washington Institute, former senior director of the National Security Council. Good to have you both with us. Uh, and let, me, let me turn to you first, Mike. Uh, the president now changing his uh, tune, as we outlined at the beginning of this broadcast, Man, that's that's a tough load to uh, to carry for the administration, isn't it? Well, Lou, facts can be pesky things. I, I think, especially when the facts don't really comport with uh, the talking points that uh, that you've been using. And, and I and I think here, what happened in Benghazi really undermines two of the administration's key narratives about the Middle East uh, and national security more broadly. Number one, that Libya was a successful, even model intervention. Uh, and number two, that uh, al-Qaeda is essentially defeated and that uh, maybe even terrorism is defeated. And I think these facts really sort of uh, hopefully will force us to have a more serious discussion about these national security issues. You think the president lied when he said that he well, had called it an act of terror? Well, look, Lou, I, as I said, I, I think that, you know, when these facts no, come know, to I mean, light, if you don't you want know, to answer, just say that. Uh, look, I, Lou, I, I think that when these facts come to light, you know, sort of, as I said, the, they don't comport with the narrative. And so the administration yeah. uh, is going to have to sort of uh, digest this and change the narrative. And that can be a very tough thing for administrations to do. Congressman Gomer, do you think the president is lying? Uh, he, of course, I, I was a district judge and a chief justice, and you have to look at the transcripts. And he said something about uh, we weren't going to put up with, with acts of terror. But he never called this an act of terrorism. And it's the same thing. Like, Michael, look at the, the, the last four years. I mean, they took away the word enemy combatant because they were afraid it might offend the people they're trying to kill us. They, they redid Homeland Security so yeah, that they have a but committee called. Uh, so, yeah, he lied. I mean, he, is, he's, he went for over two weeks and would not say this was an act of terrorism and it needs to stop. But like Michael said, their whole scenario for these four years is there's not any real terrorism. It's violent extremism. Yeah, and so, uh, un, and so that's, I'm, I'm, that's following their scenario. What is the impact? Uh, Mike, let me go back to you on this. What is the impact? When the world is watching and a president puts forward, uh, we can call these uh, reversals, flip-flops, uh, false statements, uh, changing narratives, but what in the world do, do other governments think as they watch the president do this bald face uh, with, well, actually with uh, 18 days to run just about until uh, election day? Well, you know, Lou, I think what it does mainly is it confuses people. I think there's a lot of confusion out there in the world right now about our policies in the Middle East, where are we going, our policies on things like Iran and other issues that have come up in these debates. Uh, and you hear, frankly, a, a shifting narrative about sort of where are we and where are we going. And, and I think that it undermines our prestige and our influence around the world because, you know, still in the Middle East, people are looking for American leadership. People are looking for us to articulate our strategies, and they're not hearing it from us. Congressman Gomert, uh, you get the last word here. Is this what, uh, okay, what, well, what, is it, it, what is leadership by any definition? Uh, of course it's not. And it's humiliating to this country to have a president who won't come out and face, you know, the, the tough media, not that there's any outside of, of where you are, but, but uh, goes on puff shows. But let me tell you, it all points to that this administration will not let people who come in and talk straight truth. Uh, as one intelligence officer told me, they have blinded us to who the, being able to see the enemy. They have purged hundreds or thousands of documents that might offend radical Islamists trying to kill us. We know that CARE and ISNA have a direct inroad to the White House, and they're giving them the impression, oh, no, Mr. President, they love you over there, even though they're crying death to America and we're all bin Laden and hanging you in effigy, you know, burning him in effigy. They, he's getting terrible advice, and it's doing great 
great damage to our image abroad. Congressman Gomer, thank you very much, Mike Singh. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you John. Thank you. Up next, Ann Romney.